What's up YouTube, my name is Andreas and today I'm gonna to share my poker story with you and also how this channel can help you out on your poker journey and how to improve your game with you know the knowledge that I've acquired over the last eight years being in this industry. I wanna start off with my first three years where I was exclusively playing free rolls in order to get a $1,000 ticket at the WCOP um, um, $1,000 event in Las Vegas and you know, unfortunately I couldn't win on any of these tickets. So what I ended up doing is I ended up depositing $400 on PokerStars and playing some tournaments between $1 and $10 and found some early success doing there. But I wanna talk a little bit more about the early struggles. Now, back in 2013 at the beginning, I was actually down $1,000. And you know, maybe you're the guy who deposited you know, a bunch of times and lost a little bit of money playing poker, maybe even thousands, ten thousands of dollars. And, you know, I can really see how or how that really ends up working out for you because a lot of your friends and family will tell you, hey, but how much did you win? This is the most common sentence that you hear, right? It's always about how much did you win? And you're just trying your best in order to, you know, basically succeed at your hobby. You know, you're trying to work it out and, you know, become good at this game, but it doesn't work out for you. And it's always about how much you're winning or how much you're losing and you're fed up with it. Now, you know, some of my friends also asked me and jokingly said, hey, how much did you win? I said, okay, I'm, I'm stuck a thousand dollars. Yeah, and how many hours did you play? Okay, I played about $1,500. Oh, you lost about a dollar an hour. That's not too bad, but you know, it's still not worth it, right? So about half of a year later, I actually found an answer to that, and that is I started winning at poker. I discovered this game called No Lim Doma High Low that I was doing much better than my opponents, and I found a lot of small successes, you know, winning a couple of $27 tournaments with a small field on a site called Full Tilt Poker. Now also they had a $109 event that was running every Sunday. It was called the um, Game of the Week, and it was always about mixed games. And I actually picked up new games in poker much quicker than my opponents and could run up a bankroll of about $5,000. Now, as I progressed, to the middle stage of my career in 2014, I actually binked two final tables. I actually went second and third in t 2014 and also, you know, won $35,000 doing that. Now, I couldn't really rely on this happening, but obviously I was happy that, you know, as it finally paid off what I put, um, you know, that I put so much work into this game and I finally could reap some of the rewards. But it's not guaranteed in tournament poker that you're, you know, just right away winning some of these events. I, you know, continued working hard and I also had a look at the format of cash games. And when you, you know, basically follow my channel for longer, you will see myself being very adamant about cash games and being more reliable in tournament poker because cash game really rewards the top players in this game. And there's no way that if you're a top player that you're gonna lose in cash games. If you work hard on cash games, you're gonna win money this game guaranteed if you're good enough. Now. I also, you know, basically did then between 2014 and 2016, played a lot of live cash games and had an easy time because live poker, honestly, is much easier than online poker. If you want to make money in 2018, by the way, go and play live poker. Try to figure out how to beat those play players, even though it is for more money at first. And it's a little bit scary, you know, to move in those games directly. So if you don't want to do that, start with online games first. That's just a quick tip that you can basically get experience first and then try, if you want to make money, you have to be good first, get experience and then move into the live arena where a lot of money is to be made because frankly, a lot of people just don't care losing money there. So that's what I did. I played some, you know, cash games in Zurich in 2015 and found some early success. And also then coincidentally, the next year in 2016, I was streaming on Twitch, which was, you know, a streaming platform that I could stream poker on and I still do these days. And I was winning $55,000 on stream in the tournament called Sunday Million. I was really lucky that day, I'm well aware of that. Also, by the way, I finished ninth in the Sunday warm up, which was, you know, another one of the majors that day. So it was an insane day. And I had about, you know, I think 2,000, 2,500 viewers. And, you know, all of a sudden I had so much viewership and all and whatnot. I'm gonna talk about this a, a bit later. 
and it was all a little bit you know a new experience but you know i had a lot a lot of fun that day and also you know paid off quite a bit but you know going from there you know you don't see behind the scenes and what has been happening you know after that you know after maybe losing you know twenty thirty thousand dollars in online tournament poker again and you know how much work i've put into my game and trying to become better and that's really what i want to talk about in this channel that you know there's more to it than what you just see there's more to it than just the random winners winning five hundred thousand dollars in a in a tournament in live poker you know I have been working and studying this game for years now. And I can tell you that if it hadn't been for these hours that I've put in, I would never be at the place where I'm now winning over $100,000 at this game. And, you know, you might think it's just a Sunday million cash, but no, it is the amount of hours that I put into, you know, working with softwares like an Equilab, like a PO Solver, like a Monk Solver now on Pot Limit Omaha, and also reviewing my game in a in the program called Holder Manager Omaha Manager Manager 2, where you can basically analyze your game. You can take empirical data and figure out what you're doing wrong right now to become better. By the way, there is a podcast that I, I am I've done on Smart Poker Studies, that YouTube channel, you can find it in the description below, where I'm talking about a lot of leaks that you might have and how I work with my own leagues, my students' leagues that I'm coaching and how you can get better at this. Now, as a next step, you know, I basically found myself transitioning from tournament poker um, to cash game. This was about, you know, 2017 at the middle because I had a pretty good downswing in tournament poker and I found some new success playing pot limit on my cash online and I'm continuously doing that so now. Now, if you want to figure out how you can become from the person you're depositing money into this game, whether it's in live poker or online poker, then I can just highly recommend you watch the videos, the concept videos that I've put out there. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment below. You know, in the end, it's really all about taking action. And you know, if you're watching this video and you ask yourself, okay, what can I do? Well, you can take action today. You can ask me something in the comment section below that you've been wondering about for so long. I, I, don't, I can't imagine that there's actually some questions that I couldn't find a legitimate answer to. Being in this industry for over 10,000 hours and like putting in so much effort, I'm sure I can help you out with some hints at where you can go on from your journey here and how you can find success in poker. Now, I also want to talk about something that I haven't been talking about that lot on the channel. You can see my journey here. Three years of complete free roll grinding, then finding some early success and then having that lucky pink in the sunny million. Also, I wanted to, you know, maybe illustrate your graph a little bit because I was playing cash games on the side, making some money there and I still do playing on EPTs um, in Europe and then sometimes also I was in Las Vegas. Now, this has been my grind in poker, but you know, it is all on again when it comes to being a content creator and that's what I do on YouTube and Twitch and so on and so forth. I found myself really struggling and, you know, grinding free rolls right now, you know, basically trying to, you know, get people to listen. It's not that easy. It's a whole new skill. I know that I'm a very competent poker player. I consider myself an expert in this industry, how to teach people. Um, how to succeed at poker, but I'm definitely not an expert on as a content creator. I'm at the beginning again, you know, I've, I'm doing this for a bit more than a year. And even though I have some, you know, practice in speaking to a camera because I'm a teacher and I know how to speak in front of an audience, I still have to, you know, become better and better at doing this exactly and that's what I'm doing right now and I've been struggling in particular with entertainment versus strategy because you know when I play poker on Twitch I have to focus on the game still even though I have played so many hands I still have to figure out what strategy I want to you know play in the game and it's sometimes hard to be an entertainer at the same time and really if you're a content creator and not an entertainer, that's really what I learned, you're not gonna succeed. That's just no way in hell if you're not entertaining people and keeping people captivated to your channel, it's not gonna happen. And that's actually so tough to do both at the same time. I consider like playing poker and streaming at the same time, one of the toughest things that I've done and definitely tougher than just play poker. So here's basically my perspective on things and 
you know, to drop a little bit of knowledge more for you guys, I highly recommend you watch, you know, my podcast where I talk about leak fixing and also go into my Holder Manager 2 video where I talk about which filters I use to look on your data because the only way you're going to find out about, about where your game is right now and where you can make it better is if you go into your database and, you know, analyze the hands that you've played in the past and try to get the big picture and, you know, try to find out where you can improve and take your game to the next level. Now, if you can't, have, uh, can't do that by all by yourself, I have offers on my website, andreasfurley.com. You can find my coaching offers over there and I'm sure I can help you out improving your game in the future. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video where I basically share my story with you and, you know, try to figure out what's best for you to do in the future. If you want to, you know, succeed in poker, if you don't want to just treat it as a recreational, I've been there as well, you know, I've been a recreational player, as you can see here, uh, or saw back there in 2015, 16, where, you know, I was finishing my studies, becoming a teacher and, you know, started winning at this game. You can definitely be a recreational player, not uh, still having a job on the side and still, you know, make money playing this game. All you have to do is to have to good bankroll management and the right skill set to succeed and not get tempted by a big tournament that you just try to get lucky, like a 500 buy-in that I did. Uh, it was one of my earliest mistakes in 2012 where I just played a 500 buy-in tournament and it was just dumb and, you know, it was really stupid. You shouldn't do that. And if you stick to the rules, then um, that I'm also advocating on this channel, you will have you know a great experience playing this game in 2018 where it's much tougher. So again, I hope you guys wa uh, liked watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new here. There's a lot of more content coming up, some plays and explains, strategy-based videos, but also from time to time, I'm gonna, gonna talk about my journey and how the channel will go on in the future. Thanks for watching and see you next time.